Hello, this is Jason with FLIR Systems, and today we're going to do a demonstration using a FLIR A35 infrared camera with Cognex Vision Pro software. To begin our demonstration, we'd like to use the Gigi Vision configuration tool from Cognex. This will allow us to identify a camera, set its IP address, and make sure that we have a good connecting system with our camera. So as you can see, our on our local area connection, we have a camera that does show up. It is a FLIR systems camera. The model number is an FLIR AX5, which is a Gigavision Genicam compliant camera. If needed, we can adjust the IP address to match that of our PC network that is connected to, and of course, update the camera IP address. One very nice feature of Cognex Vision Pro software is it has a show feature snapshot function and this is a very quick listing of the XML file in a Gigavision camera. So if you want a quick list of all the Genicam attributes that are exposed in the FLIR camera, you can do that with one simple step you can see all the attributes exposed as well as print them out for your reference. It's a very long list but we have better ways of looking for specific tools. So moving on to an example using Vision Pro quick build software let's take a look at how Vision Pro interfaces directly with a FLIR Gigavision camera. Now one way to quickly see what's available is go directly to your image source Vision Pro is very good at finding Gigavision cameras on the network and you can see that there is a Gigavision camera, a FLIR Systems AX5 camera on the network already so we can simply select the camera. FLIR infrared cameras do have multiple video outputs and as you can see this camera has three output flavors. Mono is an 8-bit data stream that uses onboard AGC control from FLIR which does make integration easier but also limits the data the digital data that you get on your target. Today we're making radiometric measurements so we would want to use our Mono 16 data stream. So after initializing acquisition you can now see that we have some new data that's available from the camera. If you look under image properties you can see that this is a 336 by 256 array on the FLIR camera. We also have VGA arrays as well and we are looking at our grayscale 16-bit pixel format output from the camera. There are some custom properties that may be of interest from a FLIR camera. I'm going to bring up one today. Under our camera control we have our nuke mode that we can use so infrared cameras have a custom feature that is not typically used on visible light cameras and when we say nuke it means non-uniformity correction which keeps the image uniform and stable digital data for your machine vision application and you can put it in auto, external or manual which becomes very important for automated applications so you want to be able to control the nuke of the camera when that occurs because if the nuke paddle is down or blocking the image of the camera you will not be getting an active image from your target. For today's purposes we're going to leave it in auto mode. So this is a very good tool from Vision Pro. It gives you a quick way to look at what image sources are available and then you can begin your analysis program. Today we're going to skip that. We've already taken th the time to put together a quick build application and I'm going to open one here. So we have a quick build application that we've already put together for a FLIR A35 camera. So I'll select it and open it and no we do not want to save our existing one. As you can see I also have a cog job that is already put together for an A35 PC board inspection. So now we open up our cog job and we've we've done a, a few things here already, some standard steps. 
when connecting with a FLIR thermal camera. So taking a look at our image source, the first thing that we get from a FLIR camera is the mono 16-bit image. And you can see our most recent source image is a very washed out grayscale image. You can't see any discrepancy in temperatures in the target. Well, the first tool we use is a COG pixel map tool. And if we want to take a look at an image of the output COG pixel map tool, we now have a thermally tuned image of our PC board. To take a look at this tool, you can simply double click on it. This is a very handy tool for thermally tuning the image. It gives you a very good look at all the data. We're looking at a pretty uniform target, so we have a single spike of temperature, very thin spike along a 16-bit pixel format. And what we want to do is thermally tune this image very narrowly with our 8-bit conversion tool. This is a very nice tool from Cognex as well, where you can get a quick live image of what's going on with your active tool. So as I adjust this out wider, you'll see that our image is washed out. But I can step it in and you'll see the image start coming into view. So when you get the image thermally tuned, this is just a nice HMI to get the image where we can see what's going on a little better. If you want to see the data that we have for this tool, look under reference points. And now we can see where the 16-bit digital count values are now referred over to 8-bit count values. And I want to go ahead and put this at 0. And our 8-bit is at 255. So now we have 16-bit values correlated with 8-bit values. And we have now thermally tuned our image and we have a very good looking image. Okay, our next tool that we want to use is the COG blob tool. So if we want to know a hot target within our region of interest or within the target that we're looking at, the COG blob tool is a very nice tool that can identify specific regions of interest for us. So I want to go and grab our output from our blob image and I also want to be able to adjust this live on the screen. So as you can see I can adjust the threshold for which I want to grab hot, a hot region of interest within our target. And you can see that blob not only show up here in our blob tool but also on our 8-bit image coming from the camera as well. So now we are looking at the hot target on the PC board which is what we want to inspect and have a threshold of 131 counts. If we want to take a look at our our results here, we can also see the area that we have, the size of that area, the center mass, X and Y coordinates, and we have some good data to start working with. So the next thing we want to do is it's nice to identify a, a blob based upon 8-bit data, but what we want to look at next is we now want to know, get back to the 16-bit data so that we can get correlated temperature data based upon the region of interest that we have identified. So using the COG histogram tool, we can now take a region of interest and not only do we know what the 8-bit data is, but now we can get back to the 16-bit data for a region of interest and we have minimum, maximum, and average value as well as other mathematical values for a given region and these numbers correlate to temperature. Now there's some adjustment to get these data points from digital counts to temperature and uh, we will get onto that in another training video. Once you have gone through your COG job you can save all your results and continue on with more Vision Pro video analytic tools. This is Jason with FLIR Systems. Thank you for attending our A35 Vision Pro training session. Thank you.